immediately start with our first presentation from the colleagues in uh, Freiburg and Ali Aydin. Have I got spelled it correctly? Yeah. Ali, I'll give the presentation. Okay. Yo, let's start the mini symposium on defects and fatigue. My name is Ali Aydin. I work at the Fraunhofer IWM in Freiburg. Uh, our, our project partner, industry project partner is Siemens and the, the name of my presentation, Modeling Approach for Predicting Crack Initiation at Forging Defects. Just notice that there are two main topics, a modeling approach for forging defects and uh, predicting crack initiation for these forging defects. So uh, my, my uh, topic is relevant for turbine uh, turbines like this one, uh, casting and forging processes of the, these roto discs, as you can see here, leads to uh, manufacturing defects. In this picture you can see an UT, an uh, ultrasonic testing construction, and um, detected um, UT indications, defects, in, in, in the area of this um, roto disc. Currently, forging defects are assessed by uh, as equivalent sharp cracks by fracture mechanic methods. But former studies from uh, Mr. Warfel Meath, uh, we, we see that um, the, the forging defects are a group of single defects. And the consider consideration, um, the, the, the single defects nucleate together, they nucleate, and the consideration of the crack engine Initiation phase should help to improve uh, the, the lifetime prediction. We can we can notice that um, the lifetime is in some of the lifetime uh, uh, by the, the nucleation process and the lifetime uh, by the classical fatigue crack growth. This is a, a part of the former study. We see here and and an, a representative volume of a defect field and. Uh, a modeling approach was modeled to, to um, simulate the, the damage of the defect field and the nucleation. But um, a disadvantage was that the defect field here was modeled very time consuming and my work was to automate these. Um, how, how did I done this? Um, <coughs> with an algorithm. There are two main questions. How to reproduce the real situation in a numerical model, inclusive uh, automated mesh generation, and which simplifications are acceptable. You can see in this picture an UT indication, and we take from this uh, UT indication uh, specimens and test it under uh, LCF conditions. And a colleague of mine determined um, statistical distributions about the defect size and um, the distance between defects. And I will put <coughs> them in the simulation model uh, to, to model the defect field automated in, in, the, in this model. And I have modeled a representative volume. And in this representative volume, I uh, modeled a bounding box to, to model the defect field. And in this presentation I will just uh, focus on the, the processes to um, generate the defect field. Therefore I have um, developed an algorithm, simplified <coughs> way uh, algorithm I, I show, um, flow chart I show here. We need the size and location of the uh, bounding box as we can see here and statistical distributions about the defect field. <coughs> and the algorithm starts with, um, with two input factors, one reference diameter and a porosity volume. Then defects were generated until the, the sum of single defects is equal or bigger than the porosity volume. And the defect size is determined by statistical di distribution, also the position of the defects. I modeled a an, um, an discussion to, to set up small <coughs> defects, which I, I developed a master-slave algorithm. I use an element and its neighbors to set up a defect. Also, uh, other method 
bounding sphere algorithm, there I use a point and a diameter to set up the defect. And this one is for big defects, and this one is for single de uh, small defects. All right, um, let's show uh, some results from the pre-processing. This one is the, the simulation side, and this one is a, a side, um, the, the fracture surface from, um, from the speci specimen. And we see that the, the shape of the defects, also the size and uh, the distribution and the shape of the defect field are very similar to the reality. And it shows that the algorithm is working in uh, just a robust way. So the second part of my presenta uh, pre presentation is um, predicting crack initiation for uh, defects. And I just uh, use a simplified model to, to investigate the influence of the element type and uh, defect field fragmentation on the crack initiation. Therefore, I, I modeled um, six different type of defect fields, or three different types with uh, various defect uh, formulation. I have modeled uh, hexahedron elements containing two, five, or nine defects. Also, uh, other element formulation, tetrahedron, with two, five, and nine defects. Also, I, uh, I modeled a load, uh, uniaxial tension in, in a y, y direction, uh, and uh, the maximum stress of the uh, is near uh, the, the yield strengths. Also, I adopted a cyclic material model uh, after Alan Sia um, and calibrated based on LCF tests. Just show that the, the material model is calibrated. We, you see here um, the cyclic uh, stress strain curve and the uh, and, um, monotonic stress strain curve in, in red, and a stress strain hysteresis loop calibrated on a, a strain ratio of my minus one, and uh, validated for this uh, strain ratio of uh, equal to zero. And the, the, the symbols are the simulation, and the curves are the experiments and it's just, it's just good calibrated. So um, we have the assumption of strain control plotting with uh, the uh, strain radio of minus one. And for this, uh, I just uh, draw on the right side, um, or the show on the right side, the uh, strain hysteresis, stress strain hysteresis loops for the different um, configurations. You can, you can see uh, the, uh, by, by this one, uh, the stress strain hysteresis loops for a um, hex uh, element formulation and two defects. And the uh, existing symmetry leads to a um, partitionally identical stress strain hysteresis loop. There are two loops, defect one and defect two, but uh, they just overlaid. And this I have done for uh, nine defects and five defects, he hex, elastic plastic simulations. And you also can hear, see here uh, symmetries as well as by um, hex with five defects. And the stress strain hysteresis loops are a measure of damage. So a measure of damage, we need um, an, an damage par parameter and we, we see that stress strain is a re uses, uh, correlates with fatigue damage, either via evaluation of its area or using characteristic values of the stress strain hysteresis loops. In our uh, example, we have the strain radio of minus one, so we, we can use a modified definition uh, of a damage parameter according to uh, the FKM guideline. So we have no effect of um, um, mean damage, uh, mean stress. Just we can say that our uh, SWT uh, parameter, PSWT, is uh, a square from um, uh, stress, strain, and uh, the, the Young model. 
So for this, um, you, can, you, you can see here on, on this side um, the arithmetic mean of damage parameter at each single defect. Um, and for each constellation, just um, X uh, with two de uh, defects, nine, five, and ten with five. We see an influ influence of the single defect size. We have um, a big, uh, bigger mean damage with with smaller defects, and we have an, a bigger damage scatter with smaller defects. As well, we have an influence of uh, element type. With hex elements, the mean damage is bigger than TET, and with uh, the hex, the damage scatter is smaller than the TET scatter, the damage scatter. Um, with this uh, damage parameter, we can, we can use uh, this uh, damage parameter we can use to determine the, the, um, uh, the, the cycles until crack initiation. For this, I, I determine the damage parameter Wöhler line from the LCF tests and just run, uh, transfer it to a damage parameter and, and fit it. And for each defect, Per, um, per, um, damage parameter from the defect constellation, and for each defect, I de determine the, the cycles until <coughs> break initiation. And we see that there is an effect, maybe for a hex with nine, um, with five defects, in comparison with a uh, tet with five defects, we see. Um, a damage scatter, but it's not too big. Our cycles are in, in the area of uh, two and three thousand cycles. You must uh, think um, a cycle is equal to a turbine start. So I have just one minute to conclude uh, my my presentation. Uh, algorithm for automatic modeling of forging defects um, has been developed and validated. The prediction of crack initiation and forging defects were investigated. These for different uh, defect field configurations, and um, the the main conclusions are the algorithm works in a robust way for the modeling of uh, forging defects or for defect fields. And the prediction of crack initiation uh, lifetime is really re realistic in comparison with former results by Wafolomeyev. He has determined 5,000 to uh, 20,000 cycles, but by a other um, strain ratio, a lower strain <coughs> ratio. Also, um, the, the delta sigma was uh, smaller than our delta sigma. And we have an influence <coughs> of the single defect size but it's not so significant. And uh, just finished with the outlook. Um, I will um, adopt this uh, formulation for a complex um, defect field. And I also uh, want to, um, to, to make uh, CD studies to get the volume fraction of uh, the, the defect fields and um, um, other distributions about the third dimension and the height just thank the um, uh, Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy for the support of my project and also thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. There's no time. You want me to introduce you. It's better. <laughs> questions? One or two questions and then you can... Questions are at the end of the session. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Wait, because we have 20 minutes for each presentation. No, okay. 15. When we look at the, the complete time, the seven presentations, then we will end up with 20. Anyway, okay. okay. Also, just one, one question or so. Yeah. I want to understand how do you use the, the uh, SWT model? Do you use local stress as criteria or whatever? What do you say? I uh, use uh, my SWT uh, damage parameter. 
um, at each defect local lo lo local um, I search maybe I show um, this one I search in, in this volume area for the, the highest um, stress and determined at, at one element the erratic mean in the center of the element and determined then my SVT down. Okay, okay, but the problem is there's a lot of stress and uh, the log distribution can be extremely homogeneous. That means local crack nucleation does not mean that uh, global failure, beginning of global, global, global failure. That's totally different. Yeah, I, I, with my approach, I don't um, uh, analyze the, the coarse sense of the. Okay. So, but uh, I will do do it uh, later. 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 Okay. Okay.